Um, now I would like to talk about um, API documentation and reasonable practices. Well, um, so I enjoy Java. I am a, um, I am a freelancer or consultant, and uh, I write a blog. And uh, there are a couple of uh, courses, uh, video courses as AXIO. AX Live is the um, on-demand workshops and a podcast. And if you like, you can join a virtual workshop um, in December. Okay, what I would like to talk about today is the Juxtaresin micro profile and some ideas um, how to document um, APIs. Uh, a little bit about open API and reasonable practices. And um, if you have time, a little bit about uh, testing. So um, I will just open the chat. So if you like, you can interrupt me at any time and I will try to answer all the questions. Um, so um, hopefully you can hear me. So um, now let's start coding because this is what this is dev nation and not speak nation. So um, let's start with a thing. And I think uh, now I should create an application. And this is this application will manage, of course, the dev nation. Uh, Rooms. <laughs> Let's do a rooms management. Uh, set the project version and uh, yes, and the uh, this would going to be definition rooms resource like this. Um, and perfect. And this already looks good. So what this means is, I will just open that. So what this means is, uh, we have a, a small Quarkus project. And this Quarkus project comes with uh, a REST easy and um, REST assured, which is not needed here, absolutely optional. And um, and JUnit 5, I would like to keep. So because of time, I would like to add some extensions right now. And hopefully, what's wrong? Yeah. And the extension is going to be a REST client. And another extension is going to be an open API, open API. And uh, what I'm using right now is a uh, micro profile, so REST client and open API, and both are parts of micro profile. So if we take a look at the micro profile IO, what I um, added now is the open API and the REST client. And by the way, if you are curious how um, micro profile works, you can add, click here at the link and go to the spec HTML. And this is the open API, for instance, spec. And uh, so if you click here, you will get the entire specification, which I actually already opened. And this is hopefully, wait a second, here. It is written in ASCII doc and it describes what to do. Okay, now, now we have it. And let's start the server, Maven compile Quarkus dev in dev mode. Now, uh, what happened is not a lot. So let's take a look. I have here Java rooms resource and the rooms resource returns a string. So what means is if I just switch to the browser and go to localhost 8080, and this is a goodie from Quarkus, it's not a part of micro profile official part, but is supported actually by all runtimes. And uh, this is Swagger UI. And what I hopefully get is the Swagger UI, and it says cannot. What a what a bad day, right? So let's do it again. And um, I should actually find the Swagger API, and if not, we will proceed. Oh, without Swagger, it will be hard in this session. Uh, local host local host eighty eighty slash open rp and not found, which is strange. And if we just take a look, we have uh, rest is a small open or oh, open tracing. No one complained in the chat. So open tracing is completely wrong. What I wanted to have is the open API, open RP. This is, um, let's add it again. I have to complain the chat was not very Open API, open API, small right, open API, not open tracing was completely wrong. So, and now, ha, huh, too fast to see. But if I will type uh, slower, then uh, you won't get enough time to see. 
So just add this once again, add extension and open API, open API. And what the small ray is, is the reference model res reference implementation of the, of the micro profile. I hope now it's going to be better. So what we should see now is the open API. So let's double check that. And uh, now, perfect. So this is the uh, default, um, so conventional uh, setting setup. And if I will just pull this over, now we can go to the rooms and I would like to try it out and execute. And as we can see, hello, there's a hello. So a little bit boring. So add a proper room. So a room um, is going to have a color. What I learned is I was in a green room and then in two rooms and in the middle in no room. So <laughs> the rooms are important. Room, uh, sorry, color, color. And what the rooms probably also have is ID. Let's go with ID and probably what else? I don't know. Oh, right. Because I don't think the attendees were in all the rooms I was before. So public string. And this is the uh, permission to go to the room. And let's do this as Boolean. So what I can do right now is I can go to the room resource and expose the room and say, this is my room. In the white room with black curtains. So return new room. And this won't work. Why not? Because uh, we need a constructor. But uh, the green room is very important. And now what I also would like to do is to add to add a method which saves a room. Room room. And this is going to be post. And I needed to show you something. So post and consumes, consumes, consumes media type um, application JSON. So uh, yeah. And now I would only like to print it out for now. It should be enough. So class room. Now, what I need is I need one less O. Then uh, here we need two constructors, one for convenience and the other one because of the requirements. And this one, I only would like to have the color because of time. And the other settings are this ID equals uh, system current time release. Then this color equals color and permission. We are never permitted. OK, should be enough. So now what we get out of that is hopefully, so if I switch to here, we have save and get. Post looks good. So if I just ask for the rooms, just go to the browser and take a look. What happened is the following. I see get and post. And with get, I get the uh, room as JSON, hopefully and uh, almost as JSON. Why? Because I forgot a very important extension, and this is called REST Easy JSON B. So REST Easy, REST Easy JSON B. So now the extension is added, hopefully. Sometimes it hangs here. Um, so just go away. We don't have time now. So REST Easy. JSON B, and by the way, I could just add the extension to the POM right away. So start the Quarkus again, and then, so now what we have here is just reload everything. And this is basically how I play with the APIs and try to see what actually happens here. And I say, okay, uh, I would like try and what I get back is the JSON. So it already looks good with the ID. So we could tell, OK, the ID is a little bit problematic because I don't like to expose the ID. It doesn't matter. It is probably generated by uh, our uh, conference st uh, uh, streaming software. So um, I would like to hide the ID. And we can do this, actually. I can say now with a micro profile, 
uh, so yeah, with micro profile open API schema and uh, schema and um, hidden uh, true. And now with that, if I just switch to here, it should be actually not visible. So there is no no API. Uh, sorry, no ID. And um, the same is true if I would try, for instance, so just go here. Um, I can go here to the post. Where is the post? UI. To post and uh, try, try it out. As you can see, it suggests color and permission. But I would say, okay, the permission cannot be written. So it is read only. So this is also doable. So I can say, okay, the permission is uh, the permission is read only. So let's go here and say um, schema um, read only true. So this means it is going to be exposed, but I don't get the suggestion here anymore. Hopefully, I just only get the color. And if I would like to try it out, then I won't see the um, the uh, permission. So, okay, now the room is like it is. And uh, what's also valuable in projects is uh, adding some context. And yeah, my media type is still text, really. So uh, application JSON text plane, uh, okay. Thank you to Philip Kruger. So uh, this is one of the micro profile hackers, which created actually the um, um, uh, micro profile extensions of thank you. This is a great conference, actually. You can, cannot do any errors because uh, the audience is helping you. It's like, you know, uh, pair programming with 5,000 attendees or no, six, six and a half thousand attendees. OK, now we have that. We have the application JSON in this. And uh, the question is now how to document the entire thing. And um, what I would like to share with you is something uh, which was submitted by an attendee seven years ago, actually. And we had already the same discussion with Javadoc. And what I see still in projects, in, uh, in, um, in uh, enterprise projects, that uh, the um, and developers do the same, uh, do the following. They say, you know, uh, this is a getter. This returns this. This method returns a name which is a string. This method sets a name which is a string, and this is a default constructor, and this is a class. And with that, in my opinion, is what this means is extensive documentation is no documentation. If I would describe, you know, this is HTTP protocol, and I'm using post right now, forget it. So what I think what you should not document here is so post is for saving, and post automatically implies that the room is generated on the server, uh, sorry, that the ID for, for the room is generated on the server. At get means this is actually wrong what I did. Uh, get, um, so actually a better alternative would be the path with the ID, and then I would, would get a single room. And with the get, it would return a collection of rooms. This is why we always use plural here. So, um, Designing a REST API means um, we always start with the plural here, yeah, rooms, uh, chats, messages, speakers, audience, or whatever. And um, and the rooms, get rooms, would mean I get a coll collection of rooms back. So now, what uh, we could do, for instance, add additional context. So what I would like to do is the following, add another schema annotation, schema, and say, uh, example, and we say actually, actually can be only green or transparent because I have no idea in which room I'm right now. It's, it doesn't have any color for me. Actually, can be only green or transparent. So, and with that, if we switch to the Open API browser, this is the Swagger UI, and just reload it again, we see hopefully here in the room that actually can be only green or transparent and uh, boolean is read only true and i would argue this is a true help for developer team but um what i see instead is i don't like to do it because of time uh, what developers tend to do is that they tend to tell you know get returns rooms and 200 is okay and uh on 500 means uh, internal server error so it's 
this is exactly the same problematic documentation we had 10 years ago, ago with Javadoc, where just, you know, the signature of methods w was retranslated into, into, um, into Javadoc. So um, conventional means I will only add things which provide added value, and uh, this open API should derive the value, uh, derive the value from, uh, or derive the, the API from the signature of the method. So sometimes it is not possible. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Yudai, uh, Yudai says, how do you annotate map string string? But um, even worse, so what usually can happen is, what if I do this? So this is the what happens in all projects. So if I try to do this and say, this is OK, and say, uh, build. So now it's over. So it should work as before, but I will lose a lot of information. So um, if we just, um, let's see a second. If we just uh, try it out here. So uh, it's still, I don't think he reloaded, or he's smarter than I thought. But uh, there are situations, I still know the schema, but uh, I think it is an error. Uh, let's see. So uh, localhost 8080 and open API. And in the schemas, there is um, post. OK, it, it still knows, it is smarter than I thought, that the request port is, uh, that um, it, what is it again? You refresh the post. Yeah, I refresh the post. But um, what what I what I wanted to say is um, ah, I refresh the post, and actually I meant the get. And in the get, yeah, this is um, the you know the reference is lost, so I don't know anymore uh, the reference to the post. So that's yeah, the right. Thank you to the chat. So um, I thought you know I I uh, I. Uh, this is the problematic method, not this one. And if you see, get, you see the, the context is lost. So how to provide a context? So we can actually add API response um, and API response. And um, this is the uh, content is um, content with Media type, and the media type is uh, media type. Ah, oh, we already have it, so I actually we can skip that schema. Um, just go with schema right away. Uh, schema content, right? Content. No, I was right. Uh, content, and then schema. And this is schema with implementation. Implementation and the implementation was uh, room dot class. So and this is now necessary. This was the answer to your uh, yeah attendee driven coding. This was the answer to the uh, map because um, now I provide additional context and hopefully let now take a look at that. You will see. The additional context, and you see, okay, we are back. Request body and so forth. So I, in my projects, I do not uh, actually document that uh, 200 is okay and 500 is bad because it's obvious. This is how HTTP and REST works. But if I would, for instance, would like to express that 400 indicates is actually okay, then I will write the API response. Exactly. Uh, if it works, it works. So now, cool. So I think we have a little bit of time. So. Um, what about test? And uh, we are in Quarkus project, so I would like to show you how to deal with the schema changes in the test because you get you got the point. Um, we could discuss not the rest, but it's already discussed uh, several times. So what I what I doing is service uh, in microservice projects or cloud projects under Quarkus module just for tests and in uh, outside an already existing Quarkus project. And this is going to be Dev Nation and Room SD. And uh, this is okay. I don't need now this and go to Room SD. Now in Room SD stands for system tests for historical reasons.
Yeah, someone says, Philly says, if you want to use code generator, then knowing the response is useful. I would say, I don't like code generators because they always generated, I would say, suboptimal code. And I would like to show you what we are usually doing with nice APIs. And I will generate code for, I would say, not that nice or crappy <laughs> um, UIs. So now I have my system tests. And uh, what I can do right now is actually interesting. I can, um, so take a look. I can, hopefully there is a JUnit. Yes, there is JUnit and uh, REST easy. So I don't need uh, even REST easy, but what I need, not REST assured, the best API for testing is actually MicroProfile REST client. So a REST client. REST client. And what I can do is the following. I can say I have, what was it, rooms, resource, integration test Java. And because of Quarkus, source test Java, yes. Uh, and, oh, interface, where is uh, class? And um, source test Java, okay, this looks right. And uh, I can use the Quarkus test. And now comes the interesting point. What I can also do is I can add now uh, the um, message resource client. And this is now an interface. Yeah, and faster than market. Uh, yeah, the faster than the market and uh, very fast to the market. And then for the first version and the second and third version gets longer and longer. This is the problem with I could tell you some stories. Actually, ask me the question of the AX if I can tell you some war stories with generated code. Uh, they're actually funny. But um, what I could do is for time, I can say register REST client, register, register REST client, where is it? Register REST client. And uh, usually always use the config key, but in uh, sessions, a conference session is also allowed to use the base URI. And I would like to call now localhost 8080. And the path is going to be rooms. And now the cool story is what I can do is I can actually return a JSON object and say rooms, which is not the JSON B object I had before, and say get and uh, produces produces. Uh, media type, JSON media type application JSON. So, um, okay, now in the room resource, there is no packages, so don't do it in production, of course. Uh, Corpus test, I can create a uh, method, and this method tests rooms, rooms, and it has tests. Oh, and it has tests test and now i can go here and say inject because it's corpus so this is no more micro profile this is corpus goodness and say a rest client this is the qualifier rest client and what i would like to inject is the message resource client client and then of course write some tests with asserts and say uh, what was it rooms uh, var rooms and then this trace and see whether it actually is working plus rooms uh, oh and closing methods strange rooms okay now run test and see what happens and it failed why it failed it says unable to find a message for the reader uh, okay so I think I have still to add rest easy add extension rest uh, rest easy JSON B I guess and uh, then try it again and wait a sec this is uh, produces application JSONs actually should work. And this is the right JSON. 
and uh, oh, it's it works. Surprising. So I search for the error, and because of micro profile, the errors are self-healing. You know, you see, it works just uh, if you wait enough. All the errors are gone. And now, if we go to the debug console, we see that uh, rooms returns that. Why I did this thing with JSON object and with a standalone module? And the idea is, what we could uh, right now, we can test the compatibility, the compatibility of the uh, in uh, of the API. So I can over time add more and more uh, more and more attributes. One from the system test perspective, I actually don't care. It will always work. So and now, what's also interesting? Someone asked me about code generation. What I actually wrote is a a a um, let's say rest stop. So this is my client. So I can actually go and provide test driven development with MicroProfile REST client, test it first, and then copy the code over to my production project. So I don't need any code generation. So the code generation is more interesting in case you know I'm I, I have to consume some external uh, APIs which I don't care about. Okay. Um. Okay, cool. So what uh, what this is is a standalone microprofile. Um, I, I'm actually misusing Quarkus for testing, and the cool story is with the injection. So um, with Quarkus, I can just inject my resources, and the cool story is um, you can configure the resources. So um, locally, so I never use base URI. What I use the config key. So the microprofile uh, uh, config would allow me to specify the config key. So it would look like. This so let's try that. So it would be config key equals and uh, this is um, any name you like, and then would be uh, let's say rooms, and then I probably don't get the um, code completion because I'm in test mode. But here in my application properties, I can actually say rooms. No, you see, there's no comp. It would be like it looks like I think rooms. MP rest something like that and URI and then you have to specify the URI. It looks like almost like this, so I don't know it. Um, I don't know it out of the box. And uh, why are doing this? Following this is micro profile config. So locally, I can fall back to my localhost eighty eighty, and on uh, Kubernetes, for instance, I can override in my pipeline where the service actually lives. Also, the last thing I think we're a little bit over time is. Um, that the um, we have the version here one zero it would be better one 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 two and so forth and the other microservice is also version so what it, what I can actually do I can um, check out you know older versions from uh, system tests and see whether they are still compatible with a newer version of a microservice. Okay, uh, why create a test code outside the original project, Howard? Very good question. Because if I would create the system test inside the project, Quarkus will see you know all my dependencies. I could just reuse my room one to one. So um, let's imagine that if I would just uh, go to my room and try to test in the room, the room, right? So um, I'm now in the rooms, and if I would write a test here, I could I would see actually my own class room. And this would be never incompatible because I always would see the light, the right version, but only with a separate module first. I'm forced to see my own API from the outside, and I can you know uh, check out different versions and run against the newest version. Um, yeah, so you could you know you could put this to the but to to the, I only do it in trivial projects, you know, in my whatever. So I then I put it together. But uh, with Quark was really nice to uh, to have two modules. And in the clouds, what happens is in, in the Jenkins pipeline, and let's say on OpenShift, what happens then? The project is built, deployed, system tests are compiled and built, and then executed against the system test from outside. And the cool story is, if you have multiple teams, you can actually give the uh, system tests to uh, to another team, and they they have already a working client. So I think really we are over time, right? Um, I, I lost the track a little bit. Are we over time? Who knows? I know. Yes, we're right on the top of the hour. So um, if you like that, next week, still some seats. 
You can attend the architect, architect and designing Java Micropro and Jakarta applications. We talk about stuff like that. It's a whole day, a little bit less code and, 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 and more architecture. So this is Airhex Live. Still a few seats are left and uh, it's a virtual online workshop exactly like this with only one room. <laughs> this is the thing. So we all, we all meet in one room. So, okay. Um, okay. Any questions from the audience? And uh, someone says, makes sense. I tend to create it. Um, yes. Yeah. The separate sources and uh, it only makes sense in microservice projects. Then uh, thank you for watching. And uh, I really appreciate that. And see you at upcoming conferences, hopefully Dev Nation next year. And um, yeah, and if you have any questions left, AXTV first Monday of the month, you can just you know, ask me and we have chat like that. And um, I, I, will tell on the next, I will tell you on the next AXTV award story about code generation, which was some funny or, or not that funny. So um, thank you all and big thanks to you for helping me with the syntax errors today. I was a little bit nervous because I know I am I'm late and we had some uh, connections problem problems. Thank you. Enjoy the conference and uh, stay healthy and bye.